So for most people, the first tarantula that comes to mind when thinking about tarantulas is actually the red knee tarantula from Mexico or the red rum tarantula, which is also from Mexico. Now, for many years, I have the urge to find a tarantula in a unique, epic place. And we found them in jungles, deserts, even under snow and ice over the past years. But this time, we aim to find a tarantula at a world wonder. Now, the unknown sister species Clitocatl epicureanus, the Yucatan Peninsula red rum tarantula, is actually the lesser famous sister or brother species of the extremely famous Clitocatl vagans, the iconic red rum tarantula, which is present in so many places at people's homes as pet tarantulas. So we've managed to find one of these Maya ruins and near area we are now looking for huge stones which uh, can turn around and then look for possible bigger specimens of these Tiltocatle epicureanos. So yeah. This is the Yucatan Peninsula red rump tarantula. Heard many times before, this tarantula species is native to only the top tip of the small area itself therefore making it endemic not only to Mexico but to this specific deciduous dry forest area of Yucatan. Being a mainly terrestrial sometimes fissorial tarantula it lives most of its life underground. In most cases, these tarantulas choose an area with rocks where right next to it they will dig their burrow. As the soil is rock solid due to the presence of clay, the tarantula waits for the annual rainy season to dig its tunnel into the ground. The burrows itself are around 10 to 30 centimeters deep depending on the amount of the size of rocks present. It shows that specimens directly inhabiting huge boulder rocks tend to not dig any tunnels, while specimens in more open areas or next to smaller rocks dig deeper burrows. Ancient indigenous literature and drawings showcase the admiration of tarantulas in the past by folks native to the Yucatan Peninsula. For more information, Get the book about New World Tarantulas from Perez Miles and read the chapter by Andrew Smith regarding all things tarantula folklore related. The genus got revised in the year 2019 and published in 2020 by Mexican researchers Mendoza and Frank. With the help of DNA sequencing they were able to distinguish the morphological already different tarantula groups. All the black ones with the red abdomen got their own genus as a result. Now the researcher Mendoza is working on describing all these various red rump tarantulas from Mexico. Guatemala and Belize. There are many new species remaining who differ in morphological traits but looking at them by eye not an imminent difference is present. Another common name of this species is the Yucatan rust rump tarantula. Nevertheless you have realized by now that the common name red rump tarantula refers to as many as over 10 different species. The common name suits the genus, but not a specific species. Better to go with the scientific names especially when you are keeping them as pets and try to breed them in the future. The Yucatan red rump tarantula reaches sizes at around 5 cm in body length. The males and females do not differ in coloration, meaning that no sexual dimorphism is present in this tarantula species. As with other members of the genus these tarantulas can easily live up to 10 years in females.
because of their longevity and coloration. The Yucatan red rump tarantula is much sought after for the pet trade. Luckily, breeding efforts in Mexico and all across the globe by enthusiasts make the captive breeding of this species possible, and no wild tarantulas are needed to fulfill the demand of this CITES Appendix II protected tarantula for the pet trade. One week of searching tarantulas, we did find a lot of holes uh, where there is no tarantula inside and they actually changed their place and changed their burrow. So in the meanwhile, after all these years, I somewhat come to the conclusion that tarantulas do actually swap out their burrows from time to time when there is a certain need. Even maybe it's just too much rain or the food abundance has changed. But this is all a theory and uh, not really like a lot of information is present, especially no scientific studies on that. We made it. Chichen Itza, uh, the type site of former Brachypelma epicureanum, now it's little cut to epicureanus, and even before that it had a completely different name, by, assigned by Ralph Chamberlain in 1925. So we'll check the area and find out what it is all about. Chichen Itza was one of the most important Maya towns, and it was most likely one of the legendary great cities, or Tolans. Mentioned in later Mesoamerican literature, the city may have had the most diversified population in the Maya civilization, which may have contributed to the site's numerous architectural styles. With over 2.6 million visitors in 2017, Chichen Itza is one of Mexico's most popular archaeological sites. At the mouth of the Itza's well, the Maya word Chichen Itza implies. This is derived from Kai, which means mouth or edge, and Chen or Chin, which means well. Itza is the name of an ethnic lineage group that ruled the northern peninsula in terms of politics and economics. From its sorcerer, and Ha, water, one probable translation for Itza is enchanter of the water. During its height, Chichen Itza was a major economic force in the northern Maya lowlands. Chichen Itza was able to get locally unavailable commodities from distant locations such as obsidian from central Mexico and gold from southern Central America by participating in the waterborne circumpeninsular commerce route through its port site, Avila Cerritos on the north shore. Chichen Itza is located in Mexico's Yucatan state in the eastern part of the country. The Yucatan Peninsula's northern region is karst, and the interior rivers all run underground. There are four prominent cenotes, or natural sinkholes, that might have offered abundant water year-round at Chichen, making it a desirable location for population. The Cenote Sagrado, or Sacred Cenote, is the most famous of these cenotes. After a worldwide vote, Chichen Itza's Temple of Kukukan was declared one of the new Seven Wonders of the World in 2007. Despite the fact that the poll was sponsored by a commercial organization and its methodology was questioned, government and tourism officials in Mexico praised it, predicting that as a result of the attention, the number of tourists visiting Chichen will treble by 2012. So, at the type site Chichen Itza of Hiltokatu Epicureanus, very happy that we finally found a specimen at the type locality and not only in the northern area of the Yucatan Peninsula. So, we will release her back into her burrow and then the rock we found her and uh, continue enjoying this amazing ecological site here in the province of Yucatan.
The Yucatan red rump tarantula needs between three to five years to reach maturity. Looking for a partner, the adult male tarantulas will wander long distance and eventually bump into humans on their quest. That's how most people in the area notice tarantulas in the first place by having adult males in their garden or even better, walking around their houses. Luckily there is no threat by these creepy crawlies to us humans. Tarantulas are venomous but do not possess any significant venom to cause death to humans when bitten. There are some exceptions regarding the venom potency of tarantulas, but this is reserved to tarantulas of the Old World, namely the continent of Africa or the arboreal ornamental tarantulas from India and Sri Lanka. So in case you enjoy watching videos like this with tarantulas in the wild, make sure you leave us a comment and subscribe to the channel because that's one of the only channels here who uh, really show you tarantulas in the wild with wild tarantulas at amazing places around the world. So documentaries like these showcasing tarantulas in their native environment showcase how they actually live, what they prey on, and just the general vegetation looks like should truly inspire you to go out and explore. You can start in your garden really and document all the movements, all the behavior you observe in these creatures you love and document them in the way you can do best. Maybe it's writing down some notes or maybe it's getting your phone out and just take a video and voice memo or anything like that. It is just important to us that we are just like you and citizen science really starts at combining the scientific aspect with just ordinary normal people like you and I am and try to understand nature and its surroundings and give all these data to professional scientists or maybe work your way up so that you can scientifically work in a professional environment if you like so these documentaries really should encourage you to participate in citizen science go out get your pictures videos and just contribute to the public and let us know what you find out the spiders you have in your garden in your backyard or maybe at places you are traveling to specifically i think that caught me a little bit off guard here but it's just extremely important that everyone out there can do what we do and everyone out there should actually go out and search and find and explore the world around us because that's the only world we have and it's important that we know what we have so we can protect it. And now we put it back on top.